inflorescence of the Titan Arum, and each of these little red things is a developing fruit, each from an individual flower. You can see that uh, based on really just the size of the fruits, the larger the fruit, generally the more uh, successful the pollination because there are viable seeds inside which make the fruit larger. What we want to do is touch the sides and see if there's some resistance because that will indicate that there's a viable seed inside and I can feel the stony inner part of the fruit. So we just pluck this right off and then <laughs> try not to squirt anyone, but push in and rip that outer fruit, fleshy fruit off. And there you see this beautiful viable seed, which is surrounded by the stony inner part of the fruit. Around the base of the plant where we really had trouble kind of sticking the pollen in, um, we couldn't really get any success in pollination, so the fruit is not going to be rewarding. The New York Botanical Garden um, has received quite a few of these seeds. They do have their own Amorphophallus titanum uh, population, but if they get uh, and ma manage to successfully germinate and get to flower, uh, get the, the titanarum seeds that we've given them to flower, they could quite easily cross-pollinate without having to get pollen from another institution. They could get fresh pollen. Rinse this off in just simple tap water till all the fleshy material washes off. Let this dry for maybe a day or two and then plant it in normal potting soil, maybe to a depth of an inch or so with the curved surface pointing up. And if you're lucky, in a little while, you'll see a juvenile plant emerging from the soil. Uh, this will stay green for a little while and then it might die back and then later on a larger leaf will emerge and then in a long enough period of time you might get something that looks like a miniature version of this leaf. Uh, people might not know this but the Titan, there was a Titan Arum that flowered very soon after ours at Niagara Falls so it might be that the geography of the, the area, like where we are latitudinally, uh, actually cued the, the plants to flower. Because, you know, it's very interesting that two Titan Arabs out of nowhere decided to flower very close to the same time. People think that the Titan Arab releases smells, that's why it's called the corpse lily, because it smells, smells like a corpse. But we find that the scent is uh, much more sophisticated than that. For one thing, um, the types of smells that are produced by the plant over different time periods differs. The scents that the plant produces when it's in its male phase versus its female phase is very distinct, which is unique and kind of interesting because um, they have to get the pollinators of the same kind to visit their plant so that they can go visit another plant when it's in the right stage. So the fact that there are two different scents, two different types of scent profiles, um, is very interesting at the moment and it's not kind of straightforward. Um, a story for pollination in this plant. So there's a lot more to learn. Um, we're still looking at the data right now and um, we'll give you more results as we get them.